Live from KSA 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Monday. It is January 4th, and it's our first day back after the holiday break. So happy new year to yes, everybody. Happy new year. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back to you as well. Thank you. Uh, there's so much of 2020 that we would very quickly like to put the, in the rear view mirror and and some of them are phrases that became annoying almost as soon as they <laughs> came out last year, and, right? And a lot of them we ha we've had to say in our reports. Mm -hmm. And so for us, it gets old pretty quick. Yeah, there's a new unofficial list of words or phrases that have been banished from last year. And as you might imagine, quite a few of them are COVID re related. By the way, this tongue in cheek list was created by a school up in Michigan called uh, Lake Superior State mm -hmm. University. But we've got the uh, top 10 list for this past year from LSSU. All right, so number one, of course, COVID-19. So a large number of nominators are clearly resentful of the virus and how it was overtaken or vocabulary. All right, so number two on the list, social distancing. People are tired of that. Number three, I heard people <laughs> were over this as soon as this became commonplace. The phrase, we're all in this together. They're saying it should be retired. Wow, I, you know, I guess when I see it like uh, in yard signs, it doesn't bother me as much. Right. I don't know, we'll see. But oh, this one gets me, I don't know why, in an abundance of caution. Just again, We see that a lot. Yeah. But, uh, also in these uncertain times, that one a lot of people mm -hmm. have been over, mm -hmm. you know, almost immediately too. <laughs> and then we're all guilty of this, this pivot. pivot. Uh, yeah, with our news stories, you know, pivoting in a new direction. Well, let's pivot to number seven then. That would be <laughs> unprecedented. That one has been overused. Number eight, we heard about this one uh, throughout the year as well. Yes, and I don't like this. This is Karen. The, the Karen's number eight. And so, uh, you know, this is, you know, to kind of, you know, uh, on, on a female, you know, like an, an unpleasant female, which is funny to me because I have a sister-in-law named Karen. She's like the <laughs> sweetest person ever. So Karen is not a Karen? No, not she's not. <laughs> no, uh, this, this second to last kind mm -hmm. of uh, confused us. We'd never heard of this. It's sus, shortened for suspicious. Yeah. In the I, video game Among Us, I guess the younger ones are using this one. I have never heard that. And um, number 10, this is going to take some breaking because this is a common <laughs> phrase for you and me. Yes, it is. I know, right? I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? So they're saying this one should be retired to you or banished. Without even trying, I think we said it a couple of times this morning. We, we did. I, I, I know, right? Yeah, we <laughs> did. We did. It's just that one's going to be impossible. Let's just go ahead and say that right now. Well, for us, but definitely. But we'll stick with the other nine. Yeah, okay, I can, I can live with that. Speaking of nine, it's time for this today's nine at nine. San Antonio police are asking for the public's help to find clues in the killing of a drill instructor assigned to form Sam Houston. 30 year old Jessica Ann Mitchell was found shot to death New Year's morning. We're told Mitchell was on holiday leave at the time she was killed. 21-year-old Mertez Woolen is in custody after Smith County officials say he shot and killed a pastor in a Winona church yesterday. Two others were also injured. Winona is northeast of Tyler and east of Dallas. 2,000 new cases of COVID-19 along with seven more deaths. 1,234 COVID patients are in local hospitals, 337 in intensive care, and 182 on ventilators. 14% of Bear County staffed hospital beds are available. Starting today, thousands of people here in San Antonio in the 1B category will begin getting their vaccinations with the help of University Health. The slots to get the vaccine today are filled and registration is closed right now, but University Health will make an announcement when more openings become available. The FDA is meeting this week to consider giving half doses of Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine to people ages 18 to 55. The head of Operation Warp Speed says clinical data shows the vaccine can be just as effective at half doses in that age group. In a new audio recording, President Donald Trump could be heard urging Georgia's election chief to overturn President-elect Joe Biden's win in the state, suggesting that the official find enough votes to hand President Trump the victory. President Trump confirmed in a tweet Sunday that he had spoken with Georgia's Secretary of State a day earlier. Members of President-elect Joe Biden's inaugural committee say they will be a virtual parade as Biden is sworn in to minimize crowds. The committee is also encouraging people not to travel to Washington, D.C. to watch the inauguration live. 
Nancy Pelosi secured enough votes this weekend to return as Speaker of the House for the next session of Congress. This is the San Francisco Democrats' fourth non-consecutive term to lead the House of Representatives. She was the first and so far is the only woman to serve as House Speaker. The Presidential Medal of Freedom being awarded to two congressmen who defended President Donald Trump during the impeachment hearings. The awards will go to Representative Devin Nunez of California today and Representative Jim Jordan of Ohio next week. And that's today's Nine at Nine. All right, honorable mention, we left out two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this one's drive has been driving me crazy Us. all of last year because yes. there have been many milestones, most mm -hmm. of them negative. Right. But a grim milestone has been so overused in the last year. We hear that a lot. We see that a lot. And in fact, Mark and I are making an extra effort to take that out of the script. We are. Mm -hmm. And then a friend of mine just texted me, said another phrase that should be banned. You are on mute from all those Zoom calls. Oh, yeah. I was like. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh yeah, because well, you have to tell people, because sometimes they're like really getting into their story I, and I nobody know. can hear anything. I know, right? <laughs> uh, let's <go. laughs> That's the other one. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, a not so grim Fine. milestone. It's a beautiful start to Ooh. the uh, work week here in the new year. And happy new year to you, you Justin Horn. Thank you very much. <laughs> happy new year to you guys as well. Well done. Uh, let's take a look at the visibility out there. Fog has been a problem this morning. We have some places which are still below a mile. That's down towards Catua, uh, down to the south and east of San Antonio, seeing a little bit of fog. But this is going to improve very quickly. Today's going to be gorgeous. Yesterday was really nice. Today will be equally as nice. 75 degrees and sunny. We've got a little cooler weather on the way Tuesday and Wednesday and some rain chances by Wednesday. That's some good news, too. About a 30 percent shot as we get into Wednesday morning. Uh, let's look at the visible satellite picture and you can see where some of that fog and the low cloudiness is stretching from just south of Pleasanton up to Gonzales and down to Beeville. Uh, here in San Antonio, though, sunny skies and temperatures in the 40s. 45 Bernie Stage, 45 Canyon Lake, 39 right now in Bull Verde. 34 comfort. It was chilly up there this morning and we'll see again. Those temperatures get up to about 75 later today. Light and variable winds. Couple chances for rain down the line Wednesday and again coming up this weekend. We'll take a closer look at that forecast here in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. And right now we're looking I-37 and Jones Avenue. I-10 at Woodlawn. A fairly steady traffic all across the city. Uh, we had a pretty good early morning commute. Only a few accidents here or there earlier. Right now things are looking Fantastic. And top stories we are following today. Several people are in custody this morning after San Antonio police say they threw wood, rocks and fireworks at officers. And this was after police responded to several street racing incidents that happened throughout our city. Officers arrived just before 11 last night at the Eisenhower Fleet Market, flea market rather, in the 3900 block of Eisenhower to find uh, car club racers in the parking lot. According to police, at least one person was hurt shooting off fireworks in the middle of a bunch of vehicles doing donuts. Police say at least 50 vehicles were also later spotted at a Valero gas station near Perimbot Road and that another racing incident occurred near South General McMullen Drive and West Thompson Place. Police say it was at that location when people started throwing things at officers. No other injuries were reported. We are waiting on the identity of a driver involved in a deadly crash over the weekend. Police say it happened when a man attempting to merge onto I-35 crashed into the flatbed of a tow truck with its hazard lights on. Now, police say the man had been on the side of the road and was trying to drive back onto the highway when it happened. The man in the Mercedes died on impact, and we don't know the man's identity yet, but police say he is in his late 50s or early 60s. Police also believe the sun in his eyes may have contributed to this crash. Other top stories, a homeowner left with thousands of dollars in damages after her home caught fire overnight. Firefighters on the scene say it started around 3 this morning in the 1300 block of Edison Drive. Now, when crews got to the scene, flames were already in front of the home, but they were able to knock it down quickly. Fire officials say they believe the fire was caused by a faulty electrical outlet, but investigators and arson investigators were called in just in case. Damage to the home is estimated at $20,000. The woman living at the home told firefighters she will be staying with a relative for the time being. Heads up on the north side, beginning today, McCullough Avenue between Oblate and Shannon Lee will be closed through this spring. Construction crews will be making storm drainage improvements in the area, and it will take several months to complete. Detour signs will be posted to help make sure commuters are aware of that huge closure. The drainage improvements part of a voter-approved 2017 bond. 
uh, Barbara Drive Phase 2 project will help reduce flooding in that part of our city. In your morning headlines, a couple of guys decide to jump off the roof of a hotel in downtown Nashville. Their timing really bad and a life saving surfer. And despite the pandemic, people still took the polar plunge and a great way to get rid of your Christmas tree. Let an animal do it for you. David Sears is here to explain. OK, hi, hi David. Good morning and Happy New Year to you, sir. <laughs> happy New Year to y'all. Welcome back. Thank Welcome. you. Good to be back. Barnyard friends will take care of that Christmas tree for you. That's okay. a good thing. Yeah. Well, good. Mine's wow. still up. Yeah, <laughs> for you just a second first. The hunt is on for a couple of guys who were pretty brazen in New Year's Day in Nashville. The two walked through a rooftop bar at the Grand Hyatt Hotel downtown Nashville with their parachutes on and just jumped right off the roof. The video shot by one of the patrons. Staff yelled at them, but they went anyway. When they landed, they hopped in a car and drove away. Nobody has been arrested yet. Now, there was some panic among a few people since it was just a week ago that that bomb went off in downtown Nashville on Christmas morning. All right, let's take it to Hawaii. That is a blue something in the sky. See the little dot right there floating around? That's, that's, that's something. I'm not real sure what it is. Above Nanakulai, it has a, a lot of residents warning, uh, UFO? Video taken by a resident, the blue object hung in the sky for a few minutes. Mariah and her husband actually jumped into their car then took off trying to follow the mysterious blue object. They were following it for about three miles, then it just crashed into the ocean. Mariah said it was about the size of a utility pole. They called the police, asked them to investigate. The FAA said they had no aircraft disappear off radar. No aircraft was overdue or missing. So the mysterious blue light crashing into the ocean in Hawaii continues. All right, let's stay in Hawaii. This is no mystery. That is a woman right out here. She's caught in the surf. And this is a surfer right there. That is Mikey. And Mikey is a professional service surfer. He spots a woman and heads out there to save her. He, the waves are huge. This is off Oahu, off the North Shore. The maneuver you can see finally gets there. And then watch this big wave just slam him here in just a second. Right there, they get covered up. They both finally are able to get their way to shore. He is being hailed as a hero, but he said the real heroes are the lifeguards that do this every day. They've even, yeah, you see that right there? They've even assisted his brother, so he and his brother, so he was happy to be there at the right time and able to get her out and get her to safety. All right, let's take it to Milwaukee. No pandemic is going to stop the annual polar plunge. This is a New Year's Day tradition, complete with the trombone playing polar bear to start the plunge. These folks didn't hesitate, kind of freeze away 2020 and dive right into 2021. I'm freezing. I'm really cold because it's only my second time going in. So uh, right now I can't feel my fingers, but it's exhilarating. Why are you doing this? Uh, why not? Start a new year over in a great way, right? This is our 27th year. Okay. And uh, three years ago it was five below. And one uh, year it was all ice. The Milwaukee Fire Department was on the beach just in case, but no problems. Everybody plunged and got, and got right out and got got warm <laughs> I, I don't know how they didn't say how, how cold the water was but it, it's got to uh, be pretty cold so wow but you know they're having really a great time though 20 right there couldn't wow. do it couldn't, I couldn't do it i couldn't either i i i struggle when it's 90 degrees out here <laughs> getting into a pool <laughs> there's you no gotta, way you gotta get, it looks like they're trying to social distance and and you yeah know, it is it is a there is a different look to it this it's year. supposed to improve mm -hmm. circulation david yeah mm. well mm -hmm. i'm like okay. mm. <laughs> I, this that, those people are let's milwaukee and it's cold up there all the time anyway, right? Yeah, maybe they're I mean, used to it. What kind of summer do they have in Milwaukee? They don't get into the 90s very yes. often. So, <laughs> easy. And finally, here's a new way to get rid of your Christmas tree. We're talking about this. You feed them to the goats. <laughs> Lip smack it and melt in your mouth tasty treats. <laughs> At least for a few goats in Massachusetts, it has turned into a special treat for the goats. As it turns out, Christiana says it's a natural dewormer, mm -hmm. and it is great for their digestive system. But the goats aren't the only ones who love the treats. Turns out chickens love them too. What? Yeah. Who knew? <laughs> who knew? I didn't know. Well, I'm not surprised the goats like them. Right. I mean, you know, but not the chickens. Eat anything. Well, there you but go. But the chickens like them. So there you go. So that's how you dispose of your mm -hmm. of your Christmas tree. Look, they're stacked up. They're ready to go for like months now. They got food for. I'll 
I'll pay $50 to the first sports person in the Tampa that will offer a Christmas tree to Tom Brady just to see what he does. <laughs> just get his reaction because he's the goat, right? Right. He's going to he's going to start chewing on a he won't get branch. it right away, but he'll get it eventually. <laughs> Mark, $50. Dollars. $50. That's right. Put it I'm out ready there. At That's right. He might chew on a needle or two. Mm -hmm. I, I think he might. Out of humor. Right before yeah. he chews up Washington next weekend. We'll see. Ooh. Talk sports <laughs> coming up. Wow. Thank you very much, nice David good. Sears. 913, 48 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. And supporting dozens of local restaurants for a fraction of the price. Details on deals taking place all month long. And yeah, there was a lot going on in the sports world this weekend. We'll have a recap. Some of the biggest games you may have missed. And thousands of vaccines are getting prepared to be distributed here in San Antonio. After the break, our Max Massey will be live with the details. As we go to break, let's check out stocks right now. And the market is in a mood to start out 2021. The Dow down about 180 points, 30,422. Welcome back to GMSA at 9. Already about uh, at least 6,000 medical professionals in the Alamo City have received their COVID-19 vaccinations. And today the public will be getting their chance at the Moderna vaccine. Max Massey joins us live from the wonderland of the Americas. Now, Max, how does it look out there? Good morning, guys. Take a look. This is the line we are looking at that we've been looking at. It is lining the wall here at the mall all the way around. Now, there is so much anticipation for this vaccine. People start getting here at 745. It didn't even start until 8 o'clock. We are joined here, Dr. Alsip. So, Doctor, what is the plan for all these people in line today? Well, we hope to be offering the COVID vaccination to folks who have signed up for, for today. Now, we talked about the protocol. They say it takes about 16 minutes. So what is included in that 16 minutes? Well, after you stand in line, we'll check you in, confirm your appointment time, um, have you sit down. The nurse will ask you a few questions. They'll get your vaccine. And after that, we ask you to, to wait for uh, about 15 minutes, which is recommended by the manufacturers. And after that, you're, you get scheduled a follow-up appointment. It's a two-dose series, and then you're, you're good to go. Now you are the epitome of professionalism. But this is months and months into the making. This has to be a little exciting, finally administering the vaccine to the public. It is exciting. Uh, you know, we got our first round of vaccine and started immunizing a lot of healthcare workers. And now this is one of the first times we can start offering it to the public. And every time we can uh, provide a vaccination, you know, we can prevent uh, symptomatic disease. So that's what we're here to do. Now, already 11,000 appointments filled up. So what's next? Well, uh, we filled up appointments to match our vaccine supply. After that, we need to get more vaccine. And We've had good conversations with the state. They said that we use the vaccine, we'll get more, and so we're going to hold them to it. All right, doctor. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank you. Your time. Appreciate it. And guys, we are far from done. We're going to check back in at 930, check back with the line. We're going to talk to county commissioner. Guys, back to you. All right, Max. Max. <laughs> Max live over there at Wonderland at the Americas Mall at uh, I-10 and Loop 410. And if you're in the mood to try something new, you should consider taking advantage of Culinaria Restaurant Week. Although it's called uh, Restaurant Week, it's actually a month long. Right now on KSET.com, you can check out the 40 local restaurants taking part in the biannual event. The restaurants will offer meals at fixed prices through the month. Due to COVID-19, Culinaria says that restaurant hours and menu availability may change. Culinaria's website shows to-go options will also be available. For a link to all the restaurants participating this year, just go over to KSAT.com. And a lot of restaurants having to get creative Super <laughs> recently creative. to continue to operate. Even here in the new year. Mm -hmm. Justin's back and taking a look at some average high temperatures. Yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this weekend, the first weekend of 2021 was the best. Pretty I mean, good. It was so really nice. nice. It yeah. was so If you so take incredible. the cedar out of the equation, well, that, <laughs> we, we forget about that part. Yeah, yeah. just uh, allergy medicine. Yeah, right? exactly. Just pop the Zyrtec, right? But uh, it, it was beautiful. Temperatures in the 60s and 70s. We're going to get some more nice weather again today. So let's take a look at the average temperatures. We're in our coolest time of the year. Uh, late December, early January, we average about 62 degrees. So this is sort of the bottom of the barrel, if you will, as far as temperatures go. And then we start to see an, a rise in the average temperatures. We get into late January and certainly into February. But uh, again, the weather has is, is been really pretty nice. We've seen a lot of sun. And temperatures will be above average today, I think. As we go outside right now, we've got 48 degrees at the airport. Northwesterly winds at about 3 miles per hour. Temperatures are still in the 30s up there around Comfort, but it'll warm up here soon. 38 Bandera, 46 Rio Medina, 49 at Randolph, and 49 in New Braunfels with clear skies there. There are some clouds and a little bit of fog as you get down to the south. Places like Pleasanton, 49, 54 Kennedy, 47 in Uvalde. 
And there's a look at some of the visibility down in Catula. We're down to about a quarter of a mile there. Same story in Laredo, Beville close to zero. So it's this corridor here south of San Antonio where we're seeing some of that fog. And we can actually pick that up on our visible satellite imagery. You can see it there around Catula and Beville and uh, just south of Gonzales places in Carnes County. Probably seen a little bit of that too. But here in San Antonio, it is clear. Bigger picture shows we got one storm system moving away. Most of Texas is going to be very quiet today, but notice all the action out on the West Coast. Rain, snow, another dynamic system starting to move on board here across the West Coast, and this energy will move in our direction. We'll get a piece of this energy as we get into the middle part of the week as uh, this system moves east and actually digs south as it gets into the plains. And once it's in this position, or at least Wednesday morning, I think we could get some showers out of this. So let's take a look at the surface forecast, your surface map. And it shows that by tomorrow, we'll get some increasing clouds. So the moisture starts to come back into play tomorrow. I think it, the bottom line here is we'll see some partly to mostly cloudy skies late in the day. Not a big deal. But by Wednesday, and this is in the morning, I think we'll start to see some showers, maybe some mist, some drizzle. Overall, just sort of damp to start Wednesday. But this thing moves through quickly, and so by midday Wednesday, we're already clearing out, and by Wednesday afternoon, we're back in the sun. So we're not looking for much rain out of this, but there is a chance there. And the rain chances this week, we've got some Wednesday morning, and then again Sunday. I think Sunday could be our better day for rain. Another potent system moves into Texas, and it's looking fairly decent for us, at least at the moment. 75 degrees today, sunny skies, and then clear tonight. Temperatures fall into the 60s and eventually 50s. It won't be all that cold tomorrow morning. 42, 68 for high on your Tuesday. 30% chance of rain Wednesday, clearing though late. 69 and 60s Thursday and Friday. Saturday, we're looking at mostly cloudy skies. 58. And then there's that 40% chance of rain on Sunday. And I don't want to jinx anything, but so far this winter, we've had more sunny days than I can remember. A lot of times we have stretches of cloudy, cold weather. True. It's just not happening this winter. That's all right. We'll take it. Yep. 923, 48 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, a local business owner making sure the comic book world stays alive. Details on how he's making the best of the situation during the pandemic. This week on What's Up South Texas, our Japanese Gray introduces us to a man passionate about keeping the comic book world alive on the South Side. Pete Contero started his own comic book store with his brother-in-law about 20 years ago. Since then, he has had to change things, and despite all of his obstacles, he has not stopped serving his loyal customers, especially the younger community. I tease some of my customers, no, when something's coming in. No, that one's mine, sorry, nobody's getting it. <laughs> but I'll end up selling it. And Pete says he started this all because of a passion for reading, and he says he hopes his store inspires others to love reading as well. You can check out the full story right now on Kesa.com. And Mark, you told me earlier you have your own collection, right? Yes, I'm holding on to it because right now I don't have a buyer, but mm. I've got some old Iron Man, Avengers, and Star Wars. I'm interested in the Star Wars. Cool. 927. 48 degrees. More head on GMSA at 9. Still ahead in our next half hour, the Spurs took on the Utah Jazz last night, and our RJ Marcus and David Sears will have all the highlights. Marcus Square adding a pop up farmer's market while repairs are made to the plaza. Eric Hernandez will tell us where the businesses are setting up in this week's uh, KSAT What's Up KSAT segment. And thousands of people here in San Antonio will begin getting their COVID 19 vaccinations today. We're going to be checking in on the process one more time with Max Massey. Welcome back and good morning. The goal for University Health System here in San Antonio, vaccinate at least 1,000 people a day for the next few weeks. University Health says due to overwhelming response, they quickly filled some 11,000 appointment slots and currently have none available. And today those Moderna vaccinations begin. Our Max Massey joins us at the Wonderland of the Americas. Now, Max, we've seen the lines behind you. How long does this process take? Good morning, guys. Well, you've seen the lines, but take a look at this angle. You see all these people. The good news is I'm told that it only takes about 16 minutes per person 
very quick to actually get vaccinated, but you do have to wait about 15 minutes to make sure there's no adverse effect. So far, I'm told through the 6,000 medical professionals that have been vaccinated, very few adverse effects. Now, speaking with me here, we have County Commissioner Justin Rodriguez. So what does it mean to you to see all these people lined up to get the vaccine? Yeah, well, good morning, first of all. You know, it's exciting, right? I mean, I think we know it's been a long eight, nine months. 2020 has just been a brutal year. So I think in in a certain way, this is symbolic of of light at the end of the tunnel, right? I mean, I think the community is ready to get vaccinated. We have hundreds of people coming out today. I think a thousand a day is what UHS is trying to vaccinate over the course of the next seven to 10 days. Uh, We also know too that, uh, you know, there's more coming hopefully. And so we wanna make sure people stick with us, stick with the protocol. Uh, Even after you get vaccinated, it's important to mask up and and, uh, make sure you maintain that social distancing. There are a lot of people, obviously, a thousand people a day is the goal, but a lot of people haven't gotten vaccinated and they're kind of getting bored, frustrated during this pandemic. What's your message to them? Well, you know, I I would say um, there there is uh, hope here, right? There is hope. Uh, We cannot let our guard down. This is probably more important, uh, the most important time really to double down on the efforts to mask up and not uh, gather in big groups. Uh, Obviously keep the the hygiene up. All of the protocol that our professional uh, medical uh, staff has been saying throughout this, we need to make sure we continue to do that. Uh, And then I would also tell them, look, um, this is the first round, right? I mean, we only had 17,000 at UHS. There is more coming. We understand that potentially more vaccinations are coming next week. Uh, So just hang with us. We will continue to keep folks posted both on social media, on all the county and UHS websites. uh, And and there's hope right around the corner. All right, Janet Commissioner, thank you so much. Thank you. And if you guys have any questions about the vaccines or the updates, what the plan is, we have all that information just at thecaset.com. Mark, step back to you guys. Thank you, Max. Long lines behind you. Outside with live cam. Looks so, uh, this can't be smog. I mean, it kind of looks smoggy, but we know it's better than that here in San Antonio. (laughs) Let's get an update of something else that might be in the air, and that has to do with the pollen count. Yeah, there is some pollen in the air. A little bit of haze out there, too. Maybe some patchy fog in spots. Let's look at the pollen count. It is in this morning. Mountain Cedars at 4,370, so nearly doubled today. We'll see if it continues to go up. Molds in the low category, 220. And speaking of Mountain Cedar, we had some big time counts last week, so it's a little better this week, uh, but we're trending upwards, so we'll see how that uh, continues to play out again. Today's count, 4,370. 41 right now in Comfort, 47 Canyon Lake, 49 New Braunfels, 49 Randolph. We're starting to see these temperatures warm up across the board. It'll turn into a really nice day. 75 this afternoon, sunny skies, light and variable winds. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look out at Transguide, I-10 and Woodlawn, things looking pretty good there and uh, nice and sunny. San Antonio Spurs went head-to-head with Utah Jazz last night right here in the Alamo City. And there was a lot going on in pro and college football. Joining us in the studio right now to go over all the highlights is our R.J. Marcus and David Sears. Hey, guys. Happy What's New up, Year, guys? R.J. Yeah, Happy New Year. Good to see you guys. David? I should call He's got a little grin. But, you know, <laughs> the low lights, I guess. It was yeah. a rough well, weekend for everybody. It was. Well, I guess the Aggies are happy. That Justin's the only one with a big smile on his face. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but Justin didn't pull a hamstring trying to get away from the Gatorade bath. Yeah. Oh yeah. What was that all about? Wow. Just take the Gatorade bath. What's wrong with that, yeah. Coach Fisher? Come on now. Um, yeah. Let's start here first, I guess, with the Cowboys. Okay. Because that was sort of the headliner of the weekend. Cover. Here we go. Powered by Davis Law Firm. Had to win, and then Washington had to lose last night for the Cowboys to get in the playoff. You know, when you don't even have a 500 record, do you really deserve to be in the playoffs? No, but... Mm-hmm. No, no, there's the yeah. answer. Uh, but this is the NFC East, and every yeah. team was in this thing to the okay. very end. This was the sort of this the controversial the, yeah. call of the game. Uh, Cowboys... Catch or no catch? Down. That was... Okay. Uh, that is no not catch. a catch. That's not a catch. Not a catch. The problem is Mike McCarthy didn't challenge that play. Yeah. And what's S- the point of having a challenge if you are not, not going, going to, to use it? it you right. can't take it with you when you go. Exactly. So, well. um, so what happens is they end up in field goal range and they kick a field goal, right? And now they're up by... This isn't going to come back to hurt the Cowboys, right? No. <laughs> not at not all. Of course it does. Yeah, Andy Dalton here late in the game, sort of a last heave there, gets it picked off in the end zone. This whole last series was disastrous. They get a sack, and then C.D. Lamb drops a potential game-winning touchdown, and then they get the pick here. Cowboys lose 23-19. to But see, the whole situation right there is if they challenge that catch Mm -hmm. and it becomes a non-catch, then they back the guy out of field goal range, so they have to punt. So all Dallas has to do is kick a field goal. Yeah, because already the field goal was going to be huge, and he got it. 
So, yeah. So yes. and, and Zerline was kicking, like, all day long. Yeah. So, Cowboys uh, finished their season 6-10. and 10. Yeah. Now, yes. it, the weird thing about it is, unfortunately, the uh, the Eagles just gave away the division to Washington anyway. So, I guess Cowboys fans were saved some of that pain there. Because the Eagles just, I don't know what they were doing last <laughs> night, just giving yeah. the division away to uh, Washington. So, now <laughs> the Cowboys wait and see where they end up in the draft and who they can draft. They need an offensive lineman and they need mm -hmm. a linebacker and they need <laughs> Dak Prescott to come back, and they got to sign Andy Dalton to come back because he's saying yeah, Dak. This year. That's the big question in the offseason. Will do? Are they going to re-sign Dak? Huh? Dak? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. They're going to sign <laughs> Dak. They'll, they'll sign right. Dak, but they got to uh, bring Andy Dalton back because that, yeah, was, that was the only saving that's, grace. Because you know Dak's going to be. Hey, while you're at it, add JJ uh -huh. Watt to the Dallas roster. Oh, oh. Be nice, oh. Well, <laughs> we're not even doing Texas, Texas highlights. I was going to say at least they'll be in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> All right, how about your Longhorns, Steph? What, what's, uh, what's going on here? What's what's with uh, Tom Herman just getting <laughs> fired on a Saturday? So, like, hey, uh, Steph, way, has, we fired our head coach. As, as an alum, she has some polls. She made some phone calls, and Tom Herman out of there. No, I wouldn't do that. Steph is pulling all the strings up. No. And that's the new head coach of the Texas well. Longhorn, Steve Sarkeesian, who was, was he still, I, well, I guess he still is until after the national championship mm -hmm. game next week. He is the offensive coordinator for Alabama. Yeah, so big thing with Herman, 32-18 yeah. and 18 over four seasons. Didn't really win big. They did win a Sugar Bowl. Remember that whole Texas is back yeah, uh, that, nonsense. Ooh. And uh, oh. and Sam Ellinger actually is uh, foregoing his last year yeah. and going pro. So that probably led to a lot of things there up in Austin, but uh, kind of a quick move. What was he, like one in four against Oklahoma, it was, one in three yeah, against Oklahoma? Couldn't good. beat no Oklahoma. Big 12 Didn't win the Big 12 this mm. year. They lost yeah. to Iowa State this year. There was all that controversy in the offseason about the Eyes of Texas song. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of stuff so there's just that. a lot of stuff going on. So and the Sarkeesian hire is, is just basically a lateral move. It's not, okay. I don't know. Well, I, I still wouldn't have fired Herman. I would have said, no, I, I would have said try harder. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's try harder, Herman. Yeah. <laughs> Next year's oh, well. slogan. Uh, not going to happen. Right. Steph's right. never going to be an athletic director. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, my dream. No. What a great bumper sticker, though. Yeah. Yeah. Try, try harder, harder. harder. Hook you see the people in the stands with their little flags? Try harder. Let's see. What do we got here? We're going to keep on rolling through this stuff here. Yeah, Texas A&M uh, playing in the Orange Bowl. Yes, Justin, we finally got hey, to the Aggies. He's there we go. Okay, there this. you go. Right. <laughs> That's buried the lead. That's the bright spot of the weekend, the Aggies. <laughs> this was it. Hey, you know what? Props to Texas A&M. They finished their season off on a high note. Orange Bowl champions beat North Carolina 41-27. to and I got to think a lot of what's going on in Austin had to do with what's happening there. The Aggies are really on the rise. Great yeah. season for them. Yeah. They, they, well, they're, they were fifth. They were one, one loss by Notre Dame or Ohio State or Clemson away from being in the tournament. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. not bad. Yeah. So good stuff good there. All right. Quick to the Spurs. We wrap this up real fast. They, uh, they lost to Lakers twice. <laughs> and they lost to the Jazz last night. Wow. Whoa. Yeah, this was not pretty. Hey, the Fiesta Court, very pretty, though. Very I like awesome. the Fiesta Court. <laughs> the Fiesta colors. Fiesta um, look, this was a tough loss to the Lakers. This was on New Year's Day. Mm. They have now lost four straight mm -hmm. games. They got blown out by the Jazz yesterday. And uh, we now have word that Derek White might be missing some more time with that sprained toe again. And then last night against the Jazz, the Jazz, I mean, there's the alley-oop to mm. Rudy Gobert, who started all the, never mind. <laughs> he was the first guy to come down with COVID. Remember that? They shut down. Yes. All that. Like, yes. You're one of the first with COVID. Yes. Yeah. So, uh -huh. uh, but they shot 21. They made 21 threes last night. 21 threes. The Spurs only shot 19 of them. <laughs> Out. These guys Seems made like a 21. So yeah. that's, why they, that's why they got lost. By the way, you guys were not here. Real quick, you guys were not here when Becky Hammond made history and coached. Oh, we heard about it, it though. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. at yeah. home. Pop, right. Got tossed mm -hmm. out. So. Yeah. So there you go. So that, yeah, that's there's a bright the spot for our Spurs. One yes. of the bright spots of the so season. Keldon Johnson just saw a uh, highlight yeah. there. It's still early, mm -hmm. but uh, Spurs hit the road for five straight games, including uh, this next one against the Clippers. What is it? Clippers, yeah. the Lakers, Minnesota twice, and OKC. Yeah. That's their five. So there you go. Good times. And um, Keldon Johnson's a stud. Yeah, definitely. A stud. So is Becky Hammond. So, yes. Yeah, congratulations <laughs> to her again. <laughs> yes. That's awesome stuff. So. Let's see how the Spurs and goes. I feel uh, the season goes, mm -hmm. but if we're focusing on how awesome the court looks, you know that's <laughs> yeah. not, not a good, good. sign. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just say, hey, no. the guys even had matching shoes. 
I know. That's okay. Yeah. Try harder. Try, try harder. harder. Try harder. <laughs> try harder. Yeah. Wow. That doesn't have the same ring to it. Just try uh, harder, Herman. Avis just called. They want their slogan back. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> RJ, David, thank you guys. Right <laughs> now it is 9:41. Oh, it's we try harder. That's what it is. Oh, okay. Yes. 9:41, 48 degrees. <laughs> You're watching GMSA at night. And coming up after the break, the 10 things you should know about Brooks on San Antonio's South Side. Market Square is adding pop-up farmers market and reviving Flaco Jimenez's food truck. Those are the stories our Eric Hernandez is telling us all about in today's What's Up case. It should be called, uh, I know, right? <laughs> A few stories you may have missed over the weekend are still trending this morning on KSAT.com. Our Eric Hernandez is joining us now live in the studio with a closer look at some of those stories. Hey, good morning. Morning. Hey, guys. Good morning. Happy New Year. Well, if you guys remember late last year, we started a partnership on KSAT.com with local magazine live from the South Side. And well, one of their articles has been trending on our website. It's this one, 10 things you should know about Brooks on San Antonio South Side. Now, Brooks is formerly known as Brooks City Base. But even before that, it was a former Air Force base. Brooks Air Force Base was closed in 2011 and in 2017 was renamed to Brooks. Other things you may not know about Brooks is that it's home to a 43-acre waterfront linear urban park called the Green Line. It's home to the only surviving hangar from World War I and home to several major businesses, restaurants, and entertainment options. Brooks is a 1,300-acre area. Have more facts about it online now. I didn't know all about this. This was really interesting, especially about the World War I hangar. So it's got a lot of history behind this whole section of town. That's going to be a huge growth area for decades. Oh, yeah. I could just see more things starting to pop it's, up there in the future. It's really cool. They they did a good job with it. I actually went there for a story, so I got to see that, the hangar. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, let's move on now to Market Square. It's adding a pop-up farmer's market this month as the plaza building is temporarily closed. On Saturday, the farmer's market plaza building closed for repairs and maintenance and is expected to open sometime in the spring. In the meantime, starting Thursday, more than 25 businesses from the farmer's market plaza Plaza will help head to the Centro de Artes building at 101 South Santa Rosa. The pop-up Mercado will be open Thursday through Sunday starting at 10 a.m. The rest of the shops and restaurants in Market Square will stay open during that time. And finally, did you know about 20 years ago, legendary San Antonio accordionist Flaco Jimenez owned a food truck? Well, he is now passing the Tacos Jimenez food truck down to his younger son, Leonardo Jimenez III, to revive it. This Thursday, Tacos Jimenez will be located at 10911 State Highway 16, which is at the Apple White Road intersection. Tacos Jimenez will specialize in traditional Mexican food from Monterrey and feature staples such as menudo and a specialty, which is the first time I'm hearing this, called Bañado Barcova Tacos, which sounds really good. The truck will be open Thursday through Sunday from 5 p.m. to midnight. I didn't know we had a food truck to begin with 20 years ago. I but didn't either. I, I it's didn't really know. cool that he's, they're bringing it back. Benadio Barco? Bañado. Bañado. Barco Tacos. I think they're dipped, the tortillas are dipped in some kind of sauce. Oh, how it, that's how it explains. So will, now I'm hungry. Will there be music playing? I'm sure when you it buy could your tacos. be. Right? Possible. I know Flaco Jimenez is said to still be kind of involved in it somehow. So that's I could see cool. it, you know, him swinging by every now and then. That would be nice. Let's go to our national days of the week. Today is National Spaghetti Day and Trivia Day. Tomorrow is National Keto Day, so make sure you have your spaghetti today. Oh, Wednesday yeah. is National <laughs> Bean Day. Tomorrow. Thursday is National Bobblehead Day. Friday is National Bubble Bath Day. Saturday is Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. And Sunday is Cut Your Energy Cost Day. Awesome. You're going to get this week rolling. Let's go. Thank you, All right, Erica. Guys. Thank you. Good Thank seeing you. you. 948, 48 degrees. That means Justin is back with your work week forecast. Hey there, guys. Uh, beautiful weather right now. We've got clear skies outside with live cam and uh, temperatures 48 degrees at the airport. 48 stents and 47 Kelly, 49 at Randolph. These temperatures are all on their way up. We've got light winds across the board as well. Skies are clear. Visible satellite picture shows us that. We mentioned uh, temperatures in the 40s here across Bear County. It jumped up to 59 there, Bernie Stage, 50 Castroville, 51 right now, Pleasanton, 51 out in New Valley. Then we've got a stretch of some fog and cloud cover, basically Catula up to Kennedy, Gonzales, LaGrange down to Beeville. That's the area where we are seeing some fog and low cloudiness, but I suspect that won't hang around very long. Visibility is still close to zero in Beeville, close to about a quarter of a mile in Catula, but look for improvement to happen pretty rapidly here over the next couple of hours. Drought monitor. This is pretty impressive. I mean, this shows that basically the western half of the country is in drought right now. That includes much of Texas and in our area where we're in extreme drought. But it gets worse as you get out into parts of New Mexico, far west Texas, Utah, Arizona. 
a lot of places in desperate need of rain. We're going to get a little bit with this next system, which right now is up across Pacific Northwest. You see the heavy rain stretching from Portland down to San Francisco. Some of this energy is going to work towards the middle part of the country into the plains, and eventually we'll see some of it too. Frontal boundary will work through here midday Wednesday, and that will be our next chance for rain. So about a 30% chance, mainly Wednesday morning. We've got some more chances though Saturday, more so though into Sunday, 40% chance on Sunday, and that number could go up if the models are still looking good here over the next couple days. Here's what we're looking for with regards to uh, tomorrow and Wednesday. Tomorrow afternoon, this is around 5 o'clock, we're seeing the clouds increase. Moisture begins to return to the area. I think we'll probably go partly to mostly cloudy by late tomorrow evening. And then Wednesday morning, we'll see some drizzle. Uh, I think some late showers too. Could see a thunderstorm, although I think the best opportunity for that is going to be east of I-35 as this front comes through by about midday. That's when you'll start to see some of the thunderstorms, probably College Station, LaGrange, maybe over towards Gonzales. By then, though, it looks like the front will be through San Antonio. We'll already start to clear some, and by Wednesday evening, we're back in the clear skies. Today, sunny. Temperatures up around 75 for a high, and then falling off tonight into the 60s and eventually 50s. And uh, we'll see those clouds again increase a bit tomorrow. 68 degrees on your Tuesday. 69 Wednesday, 30% chance of rain. Mostly clear. Thursday and Friday and then clouds come back into play on Saturday and a 40% chance of rain as it stands right now on Sunday. So some chances there, some small windows, but at least we are getting some rain as we start off the new year because we do need it. That's good news. Also a nice afternoon. That's good news as well. Yes, it is. Thanks, Justin. Yep. 951, 48 degrees. We'll be right back. Welcome to KSET Deals at KSETDeals.com. Today we have three products for you at great prices. We start with the Retro Game Console. This comes with 620 pre-installed games and two remote controllers. Now the retail price, $99. The KSET Deals price, $39.99. That's a 60% discount. Moving on to the Aquasonic Toothbrush and Travel Case. This has 40,000 vibrations per minute. Comes with a travel case and eight brush heads. The retail price, $99. $99, KZ Deals price $39.99, a 59% discount. Moving on to the Ultimate Anti-Aging Duo, the 24 karat gold and B Venom Anti-Aging Beauty Bundle, Nature's Botox, retail price $512, the KZ Deals price $39.99, that's a 92% discount. And you can only get these deals at KZDeals.com along with several others. Time saver traffic and we're looking at uh, steady but fairly light traffic on most of the freeways around town, including I-37 at Jones Avenue. And just beautiful out there right now. 58 degrees and sunny. It's going to be a great afternoon. 75 degrees, uh, a little bit more cloud cover tomorrow. 68 on your Tuesday, 30% chance of rain Wednesday, and then we'll have another chance of rain. Looks like late in the weekend with some cooler temperatures. Thank you, Justin. Want to let you know that somebody has filed a lawsuit over King's Hawaiian rolls. Those really sweet little mm -hmm. baked goods that they sell at stores pretty much everywhere. <laughs> right, the good rolls, right? So it's a lawsuit against a 70-year-old bread company for allegedly misleading customers into believing its sweet rolls are still made in the Aloha State. Yeah, they're suing for unspecified damages. Uh, saying that the packaging is misleading. Kings Hawaiian didn't have a statement, but they said, according to public records, uh, Kings Hawaiian has production facilities in Torrance, California, and in Flowery Branch, Georgia, in addition to some select bakery locations. The people suing saying, we'll take Hawaiian basically off the rolls then. Yeah, the lawsuit says that, that, that they paid, they wouldn't have paid it, they wouldn't, if it wasn't from Hawaii.